Hey friends, welcome back to Go On. Guys, we got a fun one today. We're talking about a new battery. Now friends, we're crazy about 12 volt over here and we're so excited when Go Kilowatt decided to send this battery out to us. So we didn't have to buy it, but guys, we're gonna put it through its paces, talk about all its features. We're gonna talk about some of the uses we have for it. Guys, we're gonna talk about all these crazy numbers here. Try to get through a little bit of battery knowledge, see if we can't learn something along the way I think it's gonna be fun. Make sure and hang back till the end. Now guys, we have, if you check back the channel, just put in two lithium ion batteries in the camper. So unfortunately we can't use this guy in that because if you're doing parallel or series, you wanna make sure that the batteries are the same size, the same, all the same components, the same manufacturer, and even the same date range. So this company here, they even say, if you're gonna be adding them together, make sure they're within three to four months of the same date range. Uh, so friends, we got a bunch of different ideas for this battery. Maybe it'll spark some ideas for you guys. One of the first ones is back home we have a John boat. So guys, we, we are over here in Florida right now, but over in Colorado we got a boat with a little five horse motor that of course needs some work. And then we wanna put a trolling motor on that. Now guys, this thing is sealed professionally, so it really is a good marine battery. So we're thinking that will be a good option for this. Of course, if you're building out a small cabin or maybe a guest house or even the shop, you wanna try lithium. Maybe you're thinking about converting the house or a portion of it, or specifically if you need some backup power, I think this is a great company to go ahead and start with, kinda of start testing lithium, see if it's for you. You can get a single battery like this and have a good little system. And in that, friends, one thing we might do, especially if we get enough of you guys excited about it, or if I just get enough excitement about it, we might build out a little DIY power station. If you check back the channel, we have, we got Opus, we got Vatid, and then we got EcoFlow Delta. We have all these little power stations, and we love them. We got all kinds of different batteries, and we're gonna keep going with this stuff, but something I think, you know, whether it be a little DIY milk crate system, or maybe something I've seen guys put on, on a dolly that you can move it around. I think some of these are really good options to have some of that backup power, maybe power some tools out in the shop. Guys, if you wanna go out on the job site or you have a work trailer and you wanna charge up all your DeWalt Milwaukee batteries, you need a little system like that, you can build this out with an inverter. So here's what I would do. Build out the battery, put an inverter on there, that way you can run all your standard appliances, and make sure you have a good charger. So on the camper build, we use the Victron IP22. That's a great charger. It goes anywhere from 15 amps of charging to 30 amps. This battery wants to be charged around 20, I see on some of the manuals, up to 100. So if you're, if you're not sure if you wanna go up to the 30, just set the charger at 15, and it'll charge this guy all day long. Only thing you can't do is run out to the shop and grab yours or grandpa's old rattle can battery charger and put it on here. Because some of those old chargers don't understand the lithium ion profile. And so you wanna make sure and you don't wanna destroy the battery. So make sure you're charging it right. Uh, but get yourself one of those. I have a link to the Victron battery charger in the description. And I also have a link to this. Guys, when we do that, you're supporting the channel it's not gonna cost you any extra. And the cool thing is, you're actually gonna get a discount. So we always try to do everything we can to get promo codes and discounts. So make sure and click that link if you're thinking about this battery and you get a little, little bit of a promo code. Uh, but the next thing we would do beyond the battery and the inverter and the charger, maybe have a battery monitor. Again, this thing has one on top of it. We're gonna get into that in a minute. But again, if I was gonna go with anything, I'd probably do the Victron, get a nice little battery monitor. And then if you really want, you can get a solar charger. Now guys, it's a beautiful day here. Currently in our travel life, we're actually at a park where it has electricity. We just came off of seven to eight days of no electricity. And we did have to use the generator a little bit to supplement. Uh, but we ended up in a, a lot of places where at least once a week we'll have electricity or we have a craft fair booth. So where we were when we were working during the daytime, we had access to electricity. So with the little power stations, I might take those over, charge them and then bring them back to the camper. So solar is not our first need, I guess at this point. In fact, on our build, I'd rather have a 
DC to DC charger coming off the truck alternator because we drive a lot, so that would charge. Uh, but for a little system like this, you know, I would add that solar component if you're thinking backup supplemental energy because say the grid goes down, then that's the way you're really gonna be charging it other than maybe your gas generator. So we might add a solar charge controller, you know, MPPT controller on there. Uh, in terms of like the inverter, this is only a 400 watt inverter. So it's not gonna power very big appliances. I would go with at least a 2000 watt inverter that way I can power our Keurig. When we were buying our power stations, we had a couple companies send us out some power stations. We bought the EcoFlow Delta because it can maintain, I think, 1800 watts. Again, this is only 400 watts. A Keurig is around 1500 watts. So when you're thinking about your power needs, it might help just to grab an appliance like this and look at the back of it and see what kind of power uh, demand it has. And then that way you'll know how you should build out your components. Again, when we start getting into some of these numbers, I think you'll, ha you'll walk away from this video equipped to better understand what you're looking for when you're trying to build out a bigger system. Uh, but again, there's a few components there. That's one option for this battery we might do. At any rate, as we go through the next year, make sure and subscribe because in a year, we'll give this battery a one year review. And if you watch the channel, you'll probably see it whether we do that DIY build Maybe we'll be out on the little John boat. Whatever we're gonna end up doing, we'll make sure and show you this battery as we use it along the way. Now friends, as you're building out, what we did with our camper is we did 200 amp hour batteries. You might wanna do the same. The reason I say that is because they have the 200 amp hour batteries. I think this company even does. But say one of those batteries goes out, I like to have redundancy. So that's why we have this battery, at least for now, I know one thing it'll serve us is a backup battery. But I did the two because maybe one battery goes out and then I still have another. If I did the 200 amp hour battery and that goes out, then you're just done. Well, I wouldn't have been done because now I have this battery, but you see what I'm saying? My flight training, that all got me thinking really heavy about redundancies and even backup to my backup. Uh, so that's what this battery is gonna do for us now is be kind of, supplemental but let's get into some of the specifics here so friends we're looking at a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour 1280 watt life po4 battery so lithium ion phosphate let's get into some of these terms and maybe we can learn a little bit by the end of this video so 12.8 volt that's basically just your standard 12 volt we won't use this number a lot just in the beginning when you're thinking about what kind of project am i doing what am i building they do have they're 24 volt also. So you'll see those two common. You'll see others, you know, whether you're doing a lawnmower battery or maybe a little motorcycle, you know, you get into some of these weird stuff. But when you're thinking about RVs or cabin builds, you typically hang out in that 12 volt or 24 volt range. Once you get that number down and what, what type of system you're building, these two numbers are gonna matter more. This number is gonna be dependent on that one. So 100 amp hour, is what size this battery is. So it can do 100 amps for one hour. And the amp hours you get, uh, you can get up to like, I think they got 500 amps or, or probably beyond in these sealed batteries. When people start building out their own, it gets into a whole nother realm that I'm not even familiar with. Uh, but at any rate, this is a 100 amp hour battery. So. Again, our plan for our camper might be six to 800 amp hours. We'll see how much we wanna supply with battery alone. We might wanna have a, just the refrigerator running off battery at some point, I don't know. So we might build out a bigger and bigger system. It'd be nice to be able to like flip on the TV or something and just have it here where if we're boondocking, if you will, we'll use our power stations and not run the battery. So just simple stuff like that. You could have it hooked up where you could even run your microwave. Again, if you have a big enough inverter, you could run things like the microwave, even AC units if you get real crazy with it. So again, friends, the 100 amp hours is the watt hours divided by the volts, that's how you get 100. Now, friends, if you were to combine two of these batteries in parallel, just like we did on the Jayco, then you would end up with 200 amp hours, but you'd still have a 12 volt system. So again, with the parallel, you're gonna, you're gonna keep the volts, but you're gonna double the, the uh, amp hours. 
So friends, if you combine this in series, you're gonna end up with a 24 volt system and then you're still gonna have 100 amp hours. Uh, so it's kinda, you gotta start twisting your mind or think about all this stuff, but with 48 volt, it's not that big a deal. You can still run, say this was a 12 volt fan, you can still run all those appliances because you have a converter to convert it from 12 volt to 24. So you can still run all your little appliances and stuff like that. I see a lot of cabin builds where you would combine these in series and then switch it to a 24 volt system. Uh, we won't get too much further into that. I do know that you have smaller wires and stuff like that. So a lot of people like dealing with the 24 volt system. Uh, but just know, depending on how you combine these, you're gonna change up different numbers there. Uh, but again, friends, I can't add this to the camper because it's not the same brand or makeup and model and all that. Now the next number I think is what is gonna be most important to us and that's the watt hours. Of course, that's dependent on these other two, especially the amp hours, but friends, this is what we're really looking for. I think we were talking earlier about this fan. I think my TV in the camper is like 120 watts and then the PlayStation that we watch movies on is like 40, so I think you have like 160. If you were to divide that 1280 by 160, you end up with about eight hours of watch time. Now we're not gonna see that because there's some voltage drop. There's some inefficiencies in the inverter. Of course, that's gonna take some power just to run the inverter. And then these batteries don't always perform to the top level like the manufacturers say. So that's where your battery monitor comes into play and stuff like that. Uh, but again, friends, that's kind of what you wanna start looking for is these watt hours and then figure out how many watts whatever you got your water pump in the camper you got lights you got all this stuff uh, or if you're running appliances like this out in the shop you know what are you going to be doing running the table saw then you really just got to get some time in it you got to start testing these things on your own and seeing what they actually pull so friends we kind of talked about how you want to charge this thing again it says anywhere from 20 to 100 amps coming into it while you're charging but we didn't talk about kind of the temperature range. So it says anywhere between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 or 122. Now that's kind of hot. I don't think I'd want to be charging in that kind of heat. I don't really want to be living in that kind of heat, uh, but it really doesn't want you to be charging the battery below freezing, if you will. Uh, so those are things you got to look out for. The, you're getting a pretty entry level battery. So as you move up, you're going to have different charge over temp protections, charge protections, you're gonna have all these different protections built in where you can kind of just set it and forget it. But with this one, you're gonna have to start thinking about a few of these things just so you're not trying to charge it when it's so hot, you know, down in Arizona, just sitting it outside in the middle of the day charging it. You don't wanna do that. And you don't wanna have it where we're from in Colorado in the middle of winter trying to charge it at nighttime. So a couple things to think there, but I think if you're just getting into this stuff, uh, you're not gonna have any problems with that. You probably like, look at us today in this chill environment down here in Florida, perfect temperature, so you're not gonna have any dramas with that. But just something to think about when you're charging this. Again, in terms of protections, I saw a guy on YouTube, 100 amp hour uh, battery here, it, can, it's, it wants you to pull out about 100 amp hours, and that's what the BMS, the battery mining system in there, that's what that wants, is about 100 amps or less of draw. Now how you'd get past that is you'd hook up a really big inverter and then have a couple tools or something like that where you're pulling like this guy I think pulled 200 amp hours out of this battery and it and it never shut off. So you get protections like in some of our power stations it'll have an air code or a shut off or you plug some heavy duty load in and it can't run it it'll just shut off if it's cold or different things like that and you're trying to charge it it'll shut off and protect itself. So this battery is not as good about having all those protections. So it's something that, you know, if, quite honestly, if you damage it, it's your own fault because you're not paying attention. So that's unfortunate because you can't just kind of set it and forget it. Uh, you got to think about things a little bit more with this battery. But again, for what you're paying, I think that's to be expected. So friends, it comes in around 26 pounds. Again, these things are getting lighter and lighter. I couldn't believe when I picked up two of these compared to my lead acid. And the measurements, you know, it's on the website, but just to give you a rough idea, the top is about 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half wide, and then about seven and a half deep. The bottom is a little bit less. Here it is, just over 12 and a half by about six and a half. And guys, it comes in about 
eight and a half tall. So it's a little bit bigger than my lead acid battery. So it's not gonna fit in the exact same box. If you're trying to change it out exactly, it won't fit. But guys, you're saving a lot of weight on this thing. It has some, somewhere between 4,000 and 15,000 cycles. So guys, it's a pretty new company as far as I know. I don't know that we have the five, 10 years to be researching all this stuff, but that's why I encourage you guys to subscribe and stick around because we're gonna keep getting into this stuff. We'll do a one year review. Guys, if it makes it to the three, four year mark, we're gonna keep talking about it and see how it's doing. Uh, but I don't think we have enough information to know exactly how long these things are lasting, if it's gonna hold up to that 4,000 or beyond cycles. But to tell you the truth, that's a lot of cycles. Like even if you were doing it every single day, and if you're building out maybe a backup power, this thing really could last you for quite some time. It's not specific for golf carts. I think the company has golf cart batteries. They have all kinds of different options. If you check the website, again, you get a discount code, so that might encourage you to head over there, but they don't seem to want to have you charging it on its side or upside down. I've saw a lot of companies where you see them mounted sideways and stuff like that, but these guys don't want you to do that. So again, I think that's something where if you're not keeping an eye on it, if you charge it sideways, if you mess it up, that's gonna be on you. Uh, but just something to think about there as well as how you're gonna be mounting it. If you need it sideways, then maybe this company wouldn't be for you. Uh, for us, it's not a problem. I, I can't ever see needing it to be that way. So that's not a drawback for me. But friends, again, I hope that you learned a little bit about some of these numbers. Uh, trying to make it make as much sense as possible. You're really concerned about how many watt hours at the end of the day, how long you can use this battery for. You might wanna buy a couple and build out a bigger system. A lot of different options there for this battery. Can't wait to get out on the water with it and see some of the ways we do it. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see a DIY milk crate type system. Uh, all kinds of fun stuff coming up on the channel. We're down here in Florida. We're hanging out for a couple more months. So if you know of anything that we should just absolutely make sure we see you while we're down here. Let us know guys in the in the comments and we'll be sure to get to that. Uh, do our best at least. We're gonna be making our way west over to Texas in a little bit, but got some fun stuff, some shark tooth hunting and stuff like that. So make sure and subscribe and come along for the channel. But friends, I think that'll do it for us. Until the next video, God bless, get up and go on.